When it comes to halal or zabiha food, New York has tons of it. It's hard to walk a one-mile radius without seeing at least one halal cart or restaurant around the corner. With all these options, it can make you feel lost for choice. To solve my first world problem, I called my friend Aman, a New York local who is allergic to basic food and, just like most New Yorkers living in a city, is a huge food critic. So I just came to New York um, today and I have like four days to explore New York and okay. I don't know where to begin. When I think of halal food, I think of halal guys. Is there more to New York than just halal guys? Oh yeah, there's, there's a lot more to say the least. And I always tell people that uh, New York City to me is reflective of the worldwide Muslim community. You know, Islam is not a religion for Arabs or South Asians. It's a community that, it's a religion that welcomes in uh, our black, black American community, the Nigerian community, the Ethiopian community, the Chinese community, the Latin American community, the Caribbean community, and so New York City really reflects that. When people, when we say that there's people from all over the world here, literally there is from all over the world. So if you're craving Senegalese food, if you're craving Caribbean food, Uyghur food, uh, Chinese food, just good old-fashioned barbecue, like we have everything here, awesome. and it's amazing. Like we have close to a million Muslims that live in New York City. And even within this 10 mile radius of where we are right now, there's more than like 200 masjids like yeah. in this area. So it is a very large and very welcoming and diverse community. And so I tell people that when you come here, don't be afraid to venture out and explore. Go on an adventure. Like you're not gonna find just good food just around your hotel and you stay in that little bubble in Midtown mm -hmm. and Times Square. You gotta go on the train. You yeah. gotta go out to Queens. You gotta go out to Brooklyn, go out to the Bronx, go out to uh, Staten Island, like that's where the culture is and that's, I'm telling people like, I always tell people like you will be so rewarded if just step out of your own comfort zone and try something different. So tell me like if I'm craving Senegalese food or any other African halal food, are, like where do I go? I think where you got to go for the best, like uh, West African food in general, uh, you got to go uptown okay. to Harlem. Oh. Harlem and the Bronx, that's where a large majority of our West African sisters and brothers live. And so naturally they're going to have very, very uh, good food. And for those who aren't familiar, um, obviously every country in Africa is different in terms of cuisine and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, in a nutshell, it's a lot of just very large platters of well-seasoned meat. Okay. If you like lamb, you like whole grilled fishes, chicken. Um, and so all these different kinds of foods are good. And so one of my favorite places is this Senegalese place called Pekine. Okay. Well-known brother in the area that runs a place. And I really, really like uh, the dibby, the grilled lamb chops there are just absolutely fantastic. Oh God, even I'm if so you're not- hungry just hearing this yeah, right now. <laughs> even if you're not a fan of lamb chops, uh, it's so good. Do they and, have plantains there? Oh, you, oh, come on, is the sky blue? Like, oh. <laughs> I always get it, the dibby with uh, plantains and couscous. Oh, nice. Uh, and then the dibby Senegal is, they take the lamb and they smother it in this like well seasoned like spicy peanut sauce and they like cover it in onions and they slow cook it uh, over a few hours and they when he unrolls it it's like wrapped in foil and when he unravels it all the the aroma just like pops out like a cloud like it's amazing nice. it's like a genie just like coming out of your lamp like how can i fulfill you today <laughs> um 
So that's one of my favorite places. Okay. And it's open late. It closes at like 2, 3 a.m. every night. So can't go wrong with it. Okay, so what if I'm craving, I don't know, Malaysian food, for example? Yeah. Are, is there a place like this in New Yeah, York? there's a couple uh, good places. Um, there's a place called Rasa. It's pretty good. It's closer to uh, NYU. So what um, dish would you recommend at Rasa? At Rasa, I mean... Especially for a beginner, because I've never had yeah. Malaysian food. Malaysian food is very different. There is a lot of curries. There's a lot of fish heads, if you like fish heads. Okay. Um, you just got to be able to try, try different things. They're a very creative uh, culture and community. Mm -hmm. um, and side note, like Malaysia is one of the best food countries, like period, in the world. And so their food there uh, reflects. But honestly, at Rasa, like you can't go wrong, you know, with anything there. Got it. What if I'm craving Caribbean food, for example? Yeah. What do we have here in New York? So they open up a place called Season Vegan that is very all healthy, all natural, organic, and vegan food. And you might be thinking, that's not kebabs. Why would I want to go here? But the food is fantastic. It is so Does it fill good. You up? Yeah. Okay. It's so good. You think they're lying about the vegan. I'm like, how did you make a vegan steak? A vegan steak. Like, uh, how did you get like vegan fried chicken? And you, you might be thinking like, oh, this sounds a little gimmicky. No, it's like legit good. Oh. And I'm, I'm just like blown away by it. What does it look like, a vegan fried chicken? It looks exactly like a drumstick. Oh. They use uh, seitan, the really like thin or thick, like, I don't, I don't think it's tofu based, but it's like kind of similar texture, but it's a lot thicker. Got it. And it resembles, it looks exactly like a chicken and it tastes like it. Oh, I see. And I'm like, bro, you're lying. Oh, wow. Like, how do you do this? And it's tasty. It's great. Okay. Great for brunch. In Harlem, a lot of the halal food that you have access to is very healthy as well. Mm. And Uyghur food is a combination of a lot of different cultures and it has a lot to do with how Islam was spread through trade through the Middle East and South Asia. And so a lot of the food it's has Chinese influence but also has some Middle Eastern influence and South Asian influence. So you get things that are very like heavily uh, kebabs, heavily seasoned in cumin um, over noodles mm -hmm. and like fried rice. Um, and all these different um, things and uh, the Uyghur Muslims also pride themselves on uh, lagman which is um, these hand pulled noodles where they take these long like jump oh, rope elastic like looking like noodles mm -hmm. and and then they, they cut them so you eat these noodle dishes and the, the noodles just like keep going and going and going oh, okay. and then they put in like cumin some lamb and some like other things so where do I and go if I want to try so it? I would recommend a couple places okay. uh, if you're in Manhattan there's a place called uh, Farida Grill okay and they're known more for their grilled meats so like kebabs uh, and other things if you want more of a so that's more of like a Middle Eastern leaning mm -hmm. Uyghur food uh, if you want more of a East Asian leaning uh, Kashgar Cafe in, in Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a trek. It's right on the beach by Coney Island, so okay. you gotta go a little far. Um, but it's just a beautiful place, and the food is so good. What do you think like about halal guys? Are there like better cart options? Oh my goodness, there's so in many better. New York. So what's interesting is when you come to New York, you realize that every single cart is halal. Yeah, just I about every. That. And so the interesting thing about that is if you look at the stu uh, history of immigration mm -hmm. in New York, uh, a lot of people think those carts are catering to tourists. To some extent, they are, but. It's, they're also catering, catering to the drivers. So the wave of immigrants in New York are reflected in the cart. So in the 30s and 40s, a lot of it, was, or the 20s and 30s, a lot of it was the Italians. Okay. So on the street corner, you would get a lot of like traditional like Italian food. Mm -hmm. And then when um, the J Jewish people started coming in in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, you started getting like knishes and um, bagels and like other things. And then when the Greeks came in in the 60s and 70s, you could get like souvlaki and gyro on the street corners. But then Egyptians and Bengalis came in the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. So then they started changing to like shawarma, biryani and everything. And because cab drivers, they've got, they're driving, they're working. So they got to grab something quick. So they just get food from the cart. So that's why all the carts are all halal. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it gets very competitive. So the quality has really gone up. Got it. So there's places like m some of my favorite carts. Um, I'm from India. My family's from India. Mm -hmm. I was born in the US. But um, 
I'm from Hyderabad, India, where biryani was invented. Oh, and okay. there was uh, a pl there's a place. 47th and 6th, I believe, okay. called Biryani Cart. Okay. Um, it's an amazing cart, and they make biryani. And in my opinion, it's better than what you get in restaurants. I'm talking like old school, traditional, like just like how your grandmother made biryani with mm. all the leaves and sticks and all the stuff in there. Um, and it's great, mm -hmm. like really, really good quality biryani for like five bucks. Yeah. Um, and because I want good quality food, like, I shouldn't have to sacrifice that. A lot of these carts, like, it feels good in the moment, and then like 30 minutes later, you gotta use the bathroom. And again, it's no disrespect to like, your halal guys of the world or other places like that, but there's so many like, better quality carts Got that it. you just have to venture out to. Mm -hmm. um, another one I like is, uh, for, is uh, Farid's mm -hmm. in uh, Queens. I see. On Steinway, mm -hmm. there's a strip of Middle Eastern restaurants and hookah lounges. They call it Little Egypt. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy named Farid that runs a truck. And when he makes you a shawarma, he bakes fresh bread on the truck. He'll make a baguette. Mm. And then every, instead of just like having a little spindle and just cutting the street meat and chopping it up, yeah. he pulls out this marinated meat and he grills everything made to order. Yeah. And it's fresh. Fresh. Mm. And it is so good. Mm -hmm. It's Every time I fly out to LaGuardia, I tell my driver, can you stop at Freed's? And I take it to the airport. Like, it's my go-to. So Aman has one bonus restaurant he wants to share with us. What is that yeah. restaurant? If you're craving a good burger, you got to go out to Brooklyn and okay. go to this place called BK Johnny. J-A-N-I. Okay. Uh, Sipti Hassan runs this place. He, by trade, was a fashion photographer. And he just really loved food. And he was always inviting like models and like photographers like over to his house and he would make them food. And they would just be blown away by the burgers that he made. And he finally opened this place and he does lots of grilled stuff. So if you go there, get a burger. If you're with a couple people, everybody get a burger and then split an order of lamb chops. Okay. They're so well seasoned and he uses really, really good meat. And you know a place that has really good meat when they don't just smother it in like toppings with like, eggs and hash browns and all these cheeses mm -hmm. i'm like well what about the quality of the meat yeah and so the meat is is front and center with the burger and it's so juicy and it's so succulent and it's more of a high-end burger place but it's worth every single penny you're and getting me hungry right now yeah. <laughs> like so I definitely have to eat after yeah this. that's definitely a place that you have to go to all right guys so you've heard it from aman um there are like a lot of places to check out you just have to be open-minded and go beyond Manhattan like check out um, Queens check out Brooklyn <laughs> so yeah check out all these places and and this is my friend Aman yes he's a uh, maybe you introduce yourself I'm a, I'm a storyteller okay. uh, in New York City uh, I travel all over the world doing uh, storytelling shows and then I put out um, short films as well awesome and yeah check out his work um, He's also like like me. He's from Ohio. We both That's right, like Midwest. Yes. So <laughs> First time he never. Met me, he was like, so you're from Ohio. Which side are you on? Yeah. Are you a Michigan fan. Or? You're from Toledo, so most Toledo people are either like Ohio or Michigan. I, I don't play that game. Yeah. I'm like. So okay, he's a diehard Buckeyes die fan, hard. and die like hard. they they are really really loyal. So yeah. Yeah. And yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you next time and um, go exploring. Bye, hasta luego. Check out Hijabi Globetrotter for 10 more halal spots in New York. The link to this article is down in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.